another episode of Classic Credits. In this episode, we'll be looking at Top Gunner, another classic from one of the kings of the arcade, Konami. In 1987, Konami released Contra. It was a smash hit. It was a seriously fun two-player run-and-gun shooter. It was the first time that many noticed the greatness of Konami's arcade's game division. This episode's game, Top Gunner, is commonly described as Contra with Jeeps. It's just interesting to note that Top Gunner came before for Contra. It was released in 1986, so shouldn't Contra be called Jackal without Jeeps? Jackal? That sounds familiar. Well, it should. The original Japanese version of this game translates into Special Forces Jackal, but was shortened to just Jackal for every other place in the world. The North American release, for whatever reason, was called Top Gunner. The game plays from a top-down perspective, where you and another player control jeeps equipped with a machine gun and grenades. You progress through a vertical path, which can also scroll horizontally, and you're trying to reach the end. On your way, you will encounter soldiers who are very fun to run over, cannons, jeeps, tanks, and all sorts of other enemies that just want to ruin your mission to save a lot of POWs. The POWs are housed inside buildings. There are two types of POW that you can rescue. The flashing ones will power up your weapon. Your grenades will then go from missiles to missiles with horizontal explosions to missiles with an X-shaped explosion. The other POWs just load up into your Jeep, hoping to be rescued. Once you pull off the clown car game with the POWs, your goal is to get them to a rescue chopper. Too bad this game isn't related to Choplifter. You could almost have like a little story between those two games. There's a limit to how many POWs that your Jeep can hold. It always makes me feel bad when I have to leave someone behind. This also means that if your Jeep is full, you can't pick up any power-up POWs to increase your firepower until you get to the chopper. A neat little touch is when your Jeep gets destroyed, most of the guys that you pick up will run around and let you pick them back up. Just a nice little touch. Top Gunner is very, very challenging. You have to beat it on one credit if you were playing alone. One frickin' credit. Notice that I say if you're playing alone. This game was originally designed for two people. It only allows you to add extra credits to continue your mission if one of the players is still alive. Basically, if you are playing solo, there is no continue. If player one or player two loses all of their lives, as long as the other player still has lives and is actively playing, the other player can buy back into the game and keep going. Both players lose their lives at the same time, it's game over. The trick that most people used was to add two credits. When they lose their last cheat, they quickly buy in as player two and add in another credit as player one. Then, once they run out of lives with player 2, they buy back in as player 1, and they just rotate it back and forth. A proper continue function would be welcome, but the unique way that this was done made it for a very co-op-centric game. One thing that Konami has always been known for is their music. The music for Jackal doesn't disappoint. It's not as well known as some of the other game soundtracks that they've done, but it is no less easy on the ears. The music and sound design of Top Gunner was done by Shinya Sakamoto and Atsushi Fijio, whose combined credits include games such as Life Force, Stinger, Russian Attack, Blades of Steel, Gradius, Gyrus, Contra 3 The Alien Wars, Axelay, Castlevania Bloodlines, and many others. Top Gunner had some slight changes in different versions of the game other than just its name. In the Jackal versions of the game, the Jeeps have a generic orange flag on the Jeeps. Top Gunner, which was released in North America only, had an American flag on the Jeeps. Also, the Japanese version, Special Forces Jackal, had the machine gun fire in the direction that the Jeep was facing. Top Gunner and Jackal versions of the game had the machine gun always facing up. The many, including myself, prefer it this way as it allows you to strafe with your jeep and helps to avoid enemy fire. All versions of the game have the grenades and missiles fire in the way that the jeep is facing. Top Gunner never got a home release under the name Top Gunner. Most of the home releases were published under the name Jackal. The exception was Final Command The Red Fortress for the Famicom in Japan. 
The game was released for several other systems, but the NES version, released in 1988, is widely considered to be the superior version of the game. This does include the arcade version. Like Contra before it, Konami wanted to really make a splash on Nintendo's new console, and they took the time to refine the gameplay and to make it an overall better game. With Jackal for the NES, they made the levels wider, they added a proper continue function, they added boss battles, they broke up the game into a series of checkpoints, uh, they added new areas, and they changed the maximum missile power from an X to a cross shape, which made it easier to judge when things would be hit by the missile's explosions. They also added the story to the game, including the soldiers driving the jeeps, which you could only get from the arcade flyer from the arcade version. Jackal for the NES is a true classic for that system. Highly recommend it. And like the arcade version, is an absolute blast to play with two players. On an interesting side note, Konami never released a game called Top Gunner for the home consoles, but Konami did release Top Gun, which was loosely based off the movie, in 1987, and a sequel, Top Gun The Second Mission, in 1989. I guess they didn't want to cause name confusion. Top Gunner never had any official sequels, but it has inspired many, many other games. Konami even took the top-down perspectives and placed it in some of the Contra sequels. The game in one form or another was not that rare. There were over 350 machines made worldwide, however, Top Gunner was the more rare version of the game. Despite Jackal being the world version of the game, many of the arcades carried the Jackal version in North America, and not Top Gunner. Thanks again for checking out Classic Credits. If you liked it, please subscribe, and make sure to share them with others. Uh, spread the word, stay tuned for the changes that are coming soon, and make sure to tune in next time where we'll once again show you a game that you may have forgotten or never even heard about.